Hello everybody and welcome to another CB Showtunes tutorial. Now today what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much create an Android game. Or I'm going to actually show you how I made this Android game. So for starters, I'm going to just show you what I got and then I'm going to explain how I did it. So as you can see we have two different buttons here for our main menu. We have our exit button and our start button. Our exit button when using the on the application and all, it will exit the game. Our start button, of course, will start the game. As you can see, we got this toggle stick. Um, it controls our vehicle, just like so. And of course, we have our toggle lights on, off. Uh, we got like this moving gate, uh, similar to what you would have like uh, in a normal game and all, or sliding door. And of course, our menu button, which brings us back to the menu. So let's go and get this covered. Starting off, you're going to need to get the Android SDK uh, to basically work on your Android. So we're going to go over to build settings and you're going to come over here to platforms and make sure to select Android and then click switch platform. Now, if it has any bugs over here, you might have to go and uh, check out some other places on how to get that fix. But uh, one way that I actually found out how to get it uh, to work is to go over to Edit Preferences, and you're going to go over to External Tools, and there should be something called Android here, and you're going to look for an SDK. Now, if you haven't heard of the Android SDK, it's pretty much just saying I can go and um, use the SDK for Android, or yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory, I guess. Anyway, so yeah, you're just going to need this SDK so then you could build for Androids. Now, if you don't got this, you can find this using um, the Android Studios. You just need to go over there and um, download the first Android Studios. And well, I guess we could do this inside another tutorial. If you guys want to learn how to do that, just uh, leave it inside the comment section below and then I'll do that tutorial there. But Anyway, once you get the Android SDK, we're going to uh, basically get started. So on our main menu, it's just a normal scene, as you can see. And we have a main camera, which is right here. We have a directional light, which gives us the lighting for our area. And of course, we have this canvas. And this canvas includes two buttons, the uh, start game and the exit game and the event system that comes with our canvas. Now, this event system is very um, necessary when you're running with Androids or iOS, uh, mainly because this allows you to start using the um, touch screens and all. Um, think of it as uh, it tracks your movement compared to, you know, just typing a ray cast and stuff like that. It simplifies, simplifies things a little bit. Okay, and then we have our scene manager. Now our scene manager is simply a game object that I called scene manager. And then I put a script on here. So let me show you guys this um, script. And I called it inner scene loc, which is uh, pretty much just me saying, I'm going to be traveling from this location to that location. So once this loads up, we can go ahead and get started with uh, that right there. Yeah, it probably will take about a couple seconds or so. Yeah, it just depends on how it likes me. Oh, there we go. Okay, so as you can see, we have this basic setup of using Unity Engine, using System Collections. Now, you may notice this new one right here called using Unity Engine dot scene management. And what this means is it allows us to use the uh, scene controller. So, it used to be to where it was like application do this, application do that, application dot load scene, blah, 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 stuff like that. Well, um, Unity 5 now is using just scene manager, and that's where this scene management comes in. So as you can see, we have this public string called new scene, and 
the reason why we have this is so we can put this on multiple objects and then be able to choose a different scene for each one. Next, we need a public void change scene, and then it will have the scene manager dot load scene, and it'll be the new scene right here. So whenever we activate this change scene, it will activate whatever this public string is. Then we have public void leave game, and this is application dot quit. So this just tells our application we're leaving, we're done, shut down the program. So let me just keep it there for a couple more seconds so then you guys can write it down if you guys need to. And there we go. Okay, so we covered our main menu. And just to, got, just to let you guys know, whenever you use these buttons on um, Android and all, it will be touch screen. So you could just put a normal button here and put it on your phone or wherever you're going to be putting it. And you could just touch the screen and it will automatically activate. All right, so we're going to go over to this play game, roll down to the bottom. And as you can see, we have this on click, right? So we dragged our scene manager over here and then simply select this. Now you can select your script, which is inner scene loc, and go over to whatever you want it to be. Now I want it to be change scene because my scene is going to be moving over to scene one or my uh, game, right? And then of course we have our exit game, which uses the inner scene loc, and we're gonna be using our different variable called leave game. And as you can see, it says it right here. And that's what these public is for. Public just means that this void is now gonna be available for um, use inside the Unity editor. So that's the reason why we have that there. Yeah, I guess I forgot to mention that earlier. Anyway, so we're gonna go back over to our um, scene one. So this is pretty much a cut and dry scene. We have our player. Uh, you can have that as whoever you want, however you want it to be and all. And of course, we have our environment. So let's cover our player first. So we have our custom joystick controller, right? So all the rest of that stuff, it's easy stuff. Uh, we've covered it before in many tutor tutorials and all. So we're just gonna cover the script today. So let's go over here, custom joystick. Now, this is gonna be really simple. All you need to do is add this new script right here. Well, these two new scripts. Well, we don't even need that one actually, but yeah, yeah. So all you need to do is add this script right here, which is Unity Standard Asset dot cross platform input. And what this does is it allows us to use the touch screen. Next, you're going to add our simple speed and rote speed as public floats, as you know, per se the normal that we always do. And where we would normally put var x is equal to input dot get right here, we're gonna be just putting cross platform input manager dot get access. That way we just cut out the previous and put in this. And what this does is simply adds in this toggle stick. So now, however we move this right here, it will have this work. So basically speaking, we're going to be using this um, common asset right here. And we're just simply going to be moving our car by using this, okay? So we covered our player now. So our scene manager is exactly identical to the other one, except we just changed simply the new scene. So the new scene is now going over to the first scene instead. And that's what we use on our menu button, which I'm not really gonna cover that because we already did that. All right, so we're not gonna cover the houses or walls. Those, the houses are on the Unity um, store. You can get those, same thing with the car. Um, so 
and we're not really going to cover those. The walls are just common cubes. Uh, let's go and cover the joystick, right? So the joystick is actually a Unity asset. You can get it under the standard assets, um, cross in platform inputs. And let me go see if I can find it. Da, 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 da. You can just look for joystick. And that will simply be your um, movement. I don't know why I can't find it. Oh, right here. Mobile stick, single stick, controller. So that's all it is. Is You can easily get it, easily download it, and then just put it inside here. And if you don't know how to do that, all you need to do is go over to Assets, um, Import Package, then go over to Cross Platform Inputs. It'll take about an hour or so for it to go and do all that. And all you need to do is add in the cross-platform inputs. So you just simply select that, select that. And you don't need to add anything else. So you don't need the fonts, you don't need, well, I guess that is pretty much it. But yeah, you don't need to add anything except for the what says cross-platform inputs and anything inside those folders. So let's go ahead and close that. So that covers what the mobile jo joystick is. And then of course we have our light button, which is our toggle light. And all that does is it simply uses our light control uh, text or script. So let's go and open up that. And as you can see, we have these three public game objects. We have our front light, back light, and body light that those were all the lights as you saw. And then we're gonna have a uh, public bool called is active. And of course it's gonna equal false. And then we're going to add in a toggle switch. So basically we're going to activate and then deactivate. So you have this one, if it is equal to true, then all these are gonna equal false. And of course it's gonna equal false. Then else is gonna equal true. And then is active is equal to true. And we have all this underneath the public void toggle light. Now the reason for this is that whenever we press this toggle light button, it's going to activate one of these and it will just switch it. So every single time we click it, it will just flip it. So that covers the light button. And then of course we have our gate, which is an amazing piece of art, I tell you. And that's just a normal gate. Anyway, so all we did with this is simply added a uh, gate open and close script. It's a very simple script. All you're going to do is pretty much just set a trigger for opening and set a trigger for closing. Now, if you don't know how to use the void on trigger, all it's simply saying is that whenever an object enters the area, it's gonna open. And whenever an object leaves the area, it's gonna close. And same thing if it's staying. Of course, we have our void start, which collects the animator and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to go and show you guys the um, animator controller. So we have our simple closed idle, then the opening of the gate, the open idle, the closing of the gate, and then back to here. Now the only ones that we want to basically have an exit time is from opening gate to open idle and closing gate to closed idle. All the rest of them, they just need to have no exit time and they all need to have a condition. So from closed idle to opening gate, it's going to need the opening script or trigger. And then from open idle to closing gate, we need to add the closing with no exit time. The reason for this is that whenever this activates, it activates this script or uh, this animation, it runs through the animation, then it goes to this immediately. And then of course, when this script is activated, it will then run through this script right here or animation right here, and then go back to here. All right, so that covers the gate and all that fun stuff. 
And that's pretty much all that you need for your game. So I'm going to go ahead and press play again so you guys can see exactly everything that it is. I would show it to you on my mobile phone, but unfortunately my camera is not that great. So we'll have to do that some other time. All right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.